Thank you. Thank you. I was going through my um, bookcase the other day. Uh, actually, it was before last Sunday because I used this on Sunday's meditation. And I picked up this book from uh, Louise, Louise Hay, and I, oh, I said, oh, to Judy, um, my birthday buddy, because we were buddies. She has since made her transition, and uh, her birthday was four days after mine. So I thought, oh, well, I'm just going to pick that up and start looking at this again because it's just little snippets of wisdom, lots of wisdom. And so I opened it to this page, and so I know there's someone here tonight that needed to hear this. Possibly me, uh, could be. Um, so let me just read this. My life is in order at a very deep level perfect order. The universe is in perfect order. The stars, the moon, and the sun are all operating in perfect divine right order. There is an order, a rhythm, and a purpose to their pathways. I am a part of that universe. Therefore, I know that there is an order, a rhythm, and a purpose for my life. Sometimes my life may seem to be in chaos, and yet in back of the chaos, I know that there is a divine order. As I put my mind in order and I learn my lessons, the chaos disappears. And then order comes back into my life. I trust that my life is really in perfect, divine, right order. All is well in my world. She loved saying that, all is well. All is well, all is why. It was always, no matter what it was, she would say, Judy, all is well. So whoever needed to hear that today, uh, that was probably me. Um, so there was, there was my inspiration for you. So, and now what we've been waiting for how do you feel? How do you feel? Let's let Dave Freeman tell us how we feel. Let's welcome Dave into this. shoes that broke, and I've been wearing sandals for three weeks. Now I have a pair of shoes. I've stepped on myself. How do you feel about that? I'm a little tripped up, thank you for asking. But I'll string it along and we'll see how we can do. Okay. How do you feel? Are you like, like this? Do you feel like yeah, this is audience participation. Don't worry, I'll, I'll give you a mic if you like. <laughs> One of the things about how we feel is that how do you know how do we feel? And what does feeling really feel like? Conventional wisdom suggests that feelings are just the names we give emotions. And that there's a difference. Now, it was doing a lot of homework on this, and there is a lot of gray area, and it depends on who you talk to. But basically, emotions are strong. Emotions are involuntary. We don't get a chance to control emotions. They're all encompassing. And feelings is what we make of them. So the feelings are based on knowledge or for reasoning. Emotions are instinctive. How do we deal with them? What do we do with them? How do they manifest? Can we control them? Should we? So many questions, so little time. I started having fun with this word emotion. 
and today all this, all everything is electronic with e-cigs and e-speak and email, e-bytes. So like e-motion, like electronic motion, right? But it's not really. But in our personal space, like a virtual reality, it's not personal at all, is it? Emotion is very, very real. Emotion is, it can't be corralled, it can't be held on to. We can't even really summon it. But it is our reality with a capital R. It's a physical sense that tells us how we feel about something. And again, the feelings that we attach to it is us trying to, to make sense of it. We're going to say this three or four different ways just to get it. I think that emotions really are our truth. I think that's what guides us. And I think that when we listen, it's good. And when we don't, maybe not so much. How many of you have ever, like, really been in love? What? Everybody. I love it. <laughs> this version of love that we call, you know, love. You know, because we, we love is, is all there is. And this version of love between people, we could call it with our little love. But it feels like really big love, doesn't it? And it's an involuntary state of bliss that occurs when confronted by the object of your affection. Uncontrollable. For instance, in this state, you might find yourself singing, whistling, smiling out loud for no reason. Just walking down the street. You ever walk down the street going like this? What is this? Oh, yeah. Mm, something in here. Huh? I was like that once. Maybe twice. Bliss, though, so love is a feeling. Bliss, the emotion, is something that comes over us when we're not looking. You can't really create bliss. Happiness, we can create. Bliss is that strong, sudden feeling. Happiness is what we give it. We create happiness by getting happy thoughts. We can create happiness by singing. Did you ever try that? Yep. Mm -hmm. How's that work for you? Works, doesn't it? It's almost not possible to be unhappy while singing. There's been times when I found myself, say, in less than a stellar mood, and I forced myself to start singing and immediately changed my inner weather pattern. It's a beautiful thing. So, do we have any science geeks in the room? Any what? Science? science? Okay, ready? Science. Let's just watch this. I have to read this one. Emotions. Should I get my voice on? Emotions. <laughs> Emotions are lower-level responses occurring in the subcortical regions of the brain, the amygdala, and the ventral medical prefrontal cortices, creating biomedical reactions in your body, altering your physical state. They originally helped our species survive by producing quick reactions to threat, reward, and everything in between their environments. Emotional reactions are coded in our genes. And while they do vary slightly and depending on circumstances, they are generally universally similar across all humans and even other species. For example, you smile and a dog wags its tail. <laughs> Feelings, on the other hand, originate in the neocortical regions of the brain and are mental associations and reactions to emotions and are subjective being influenced by personal experiences, beliefs, and memories. A feeling is a mental portrayal of what is going on in your body when you have an emotion and is the byproduct of your brain perceiving and assigning meaning to the emotion. Mm -hmm. Feelings are the next thing that happens after having an emotion. They involve cognitive input and are usually subconscious and cannot be precisely measured. Mm -hmm. Got that? Yeah. Cool, read it back to me. <laughs> Give me your apple. <laughs> Simply stated by this guy, Antonio Diamasio, professor of neuroscience at the University of California, I am threatened, I experience fear, and feel horror. And another way to put it, emotions play out in the theater of the body. Feelings play out in the theater of the mind. Yeah, I like that one too. Emotions tell us what our truth is about something. 
You know deep down in your soul, you know when you just know. You just know, right? That's emotion. That's truth. That's not thought. That's felt. How does feeling in the emotion relate to our path? When we consciously find the feeling within to create the emotion, that shows spirit what it is that we want to experience. More on that in a little bit. Here's a random thought while driving. You can have a feeling without having an emotion, but you can't have an emotion without having a feeling. are real. Who's ever cried at a movie? I'll admit to getting a little teary-eyed watching those Facebook videos, you know, the servicemen coming home, Daddy! He goes, oh, oh. You know, right? <laughs> it is a beautiful thing. And now you've got to fess up now, too. You know, you've been touched by commercials, right? Yeah. A few of those commercials. Oh. Those events have nothing to do with us. Or do they? I believe that that proves our emotional connection to each other through spirit, our oneness. See, we are feeling something at our core that is being energetically created somewhere outside of us. Though as we know, there really isn't an outside, is there? They feel, we feel. That's that big oneness thing that we're all part of. Ad companies know about how powerful our emotions are too, right? And they use them to their advantage. Remember that Budweiser commercial? I think they call it Best Friends, where the dog got taken out somewhere and the horse kept chasing them. No? <clears throat> no? Did you ever remember it was Budweiser? Or just remember how you feel about the commercial, right? Had nothing to do with beer, yet we all remember that one. They know this. This marketing guru says that we don't even think our way to logical solutions. Emotions are substrate, the, the base layer. I'm not going to read that all to you. But look at this. Everyone's bought a car, right? You do your homework. You do the comparison. You look all over. You talk to your friends. And then you make the solid decision, right? And which car did you choose? The pretty one. Right? With the nice tires and the pinstripes, right? <laughs> the green one. Hunter green? We were never meant to neglect our emotions or to hold our feelings in. If so, we wouldn't be experiencing them in the first place. So it's built into us to, to feel our emotions. So one of, I believe, if not the easiest emotion to notice <coughs> is anger. Mm -hmm. It's also the scariest. Do I think love can be a little scary sometimes, too? But for the most part, true anger is all-encompassing. It leads to uncontrollable, destructive actions. People die in the throes of someone else's answer, anger, and others go to prison for their actions. So this will be fun to talk about for a couple of minutes. Any idea what's behind anger? Yeah. Fear. Yeah. Fear? Hatred. Say it again. Hatred. 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 Mm -hmm. Okay. Lack of control. Yeah. Okay. No. Lack of control for those who didn't hear that. <clears throat> I was blessed to get a chance to deal with this a while back. Mm -hmm. We're looking to Dave's dark side. <laughs> I noticed a theme. In, in, in my space, I call it lack. It was a lack of freedom, lack of control, a lack of freedom to be. Maybe it was a little silly. Maybe I thought I should be entitled to a different way, but that's you know how I was feeling at the time. I felt you know I was being a prisoner to raise consciousness. You should be this, but I'm feeling this, and yeah, it got me angry. I wasn't really being the the feeling at the time. Now, knowing what I know, let me know that I wasn't being true to myself. But at that time, I wasn't paying that kind of attention to it. There was this one time, I don't remember exactly what the trigger was, 
I was upset might be a kind word. And walking in the front door, there was this perfectly positioned projectile, commonly known as a wastebasket. And the ensuing slow motion arc was a thing of beauty. Oh my. Skipped over it, my dear. The subsequent landing smack in the middle of the window, complete with crash, was completely unsatisfying. I didn't catch it at the time, but that was one of the first, because I was watching it. It was like the first appearance that I could remember of my watcher. I was in it, but I was also kind of watching it. And after years of being in this philosophy and doing this work, I'm so much better at accepting things the way they are. Eckhart Tolle points out that stress is a result of wanting something to be the way that it isn't. I want this. Well, you can't have it. It's like this, right? I think I've changed and modified my mind, and now I rarely feel as angry as I don't really get thrown that much by outside influences. Well, mostly. And I realize that whatever happens on the outside really has nothing to do with me. So what happens is that when this presents itself, it happens much less frequency, much less smaller, and doesn't stay around very long. And another way I've reduced it is to become more of a watcher. I've changed from I'm angry to there is anger. So now I've separated from it one more step. It's not me, but it is there. So what sets you off? Situations, other people, drivers on the five. <laughs> you know what pushes my buttons? Me. Yeah. When something happens that I think I should have done differently or something happens, it's kind of like my fault. Just one of my pre-programmed buttons get pushed and boom, pissed. Oh, oh, oh. Now what? Another proof to me that anger truly is an emotion because it comes on unbidden. We also fixate a lot on how negative anger can be, how it can take hold of us, how it can hurt others. The thing is, it's not going anywhere. It is here. No matter how much ha no happy you are, how much in sync you are with the universe, anger is just one of those things that is probably very calm, common. <laughs> anger is very calming. <laughs> I've actually heard some describe the feeling of anger as delicious. You get wrapped up in it. Isn't that interesting? Yeah. Yeah, right? Wow. Almost eerily comforting. Something just to sit in for a while. But unlike a summer storm that quickly passes and leaves the air fresh and clean, when anger subsides, even when it passes quickly, it leaves something behind. Mm. You never quite come all the way back to where you were before the storm hit. I'm not going to share that story with you. Okay. It's just proof that, you know, it doesn't. How would you feel? How would you describe the feeling of anger, though, when it happens? Melancholy? Gloomy? Just scary. Red. Highly spirited. Highly spirited, right? Tension. Tension. Some angers debilitate, but some angers, highly spirited, can be turned into good. I'm sure you've heard of some organizations. I'm pissed off about this. Well, let's go do something about it, right? Yeah. I heard there's one thing called Moms Demand Action that they got together because of all the shootings around. She got angry and I'm going to start something and now it's an international organization. From the Science of Mind textbook, physicians now testify that under emotional stress, particularly anger, the blood leaves a chemical deposit around the joints of the body. And the further in the book, it says destructive emotions, desires, or ideas, unless neutralized, will grow into some bodily condition and may produce disease. So there is a physical component. It is critically important to allow yourself to feel. You know, we try sometimes to squash this stuff, but we gotta be in touch with this. 
These feelings exist for the sole purpose of forcing action, either towards pleasure, fulfillment, and growth, or away from pain. Don't judge them. Don't judge how you feel. There's no right or wrong. It just is. And so we can use these emotions and these feelings to guide us. And of course, we use our emotions to create. We all knew that, though, didn't we? I love a learned audience. So this is a visual that I came up with. This is an event up here, OK? And what happens is you have a reaction to it. There's your emotion. Then you determine what that feeling is for yourself, OK? And then you live in it, and that's your experience. If we do it the other way, we decide what it is that we'd like to experience. Go find that feeling. This is something we know. There's a concept called spiritual shape shifting, which is really the idea of taking something, a feeling that we already know. And you can do this in like, I know that I'm good at this, and I'm not sure I'm good over here. So take that feeling of being good over here and go over here into that situation with that feeling. And then you'll be more comfortable in that space. So take that feeling that we already know. Let's try this for a minute. What would you like to experience? Take a feeling that you already know. Grab a hold of it. And feel it. Sit in the feeling as if the situation that you're experiencing is happening right now. Add some color to it. Maybe a little smell. Some sound. just did. I saw you guys. Everyone just went away. It was really cool. But you were in it. You found it. That's the feeling. When you want something, get that feeling and apply it to what it is that you're looking for. Use that to build your emotion. Creation will happen. You will find it. I found this cool website. The secret of creation is emotion. Emotion is the birthing process. The universal mind as great mother birthed all things into existence by emotion. The one thing only became the 10,000 things by the feeling. The very act of feeling moves and shapes this universal substance. The thought is masculine. The feeling is feminine. Feminine gives birth. The masculine impregnates. Only when your thought is turned into feeling will your subconscious mind work upon subjective reality and substantiate idea. Right? This is exactly what we study here. It goes on to say, realize though that you can not only use the desirable emotions, but also undesirable emotions to create or affect reality. Sometimes they're more powerful. <laughs> like you say with the anger, right? And then that also is very creative. A burst of emotional uh, energy can pull a manifestation into happening. Of course, it would be much better to use a, a desirable of a creation in, in the long run. And then uh, Ernest Holmes adds, before such a mental attitude can be created, there must be nothing left in the subjective state of our thought which contradicts our objective affirmation. There must be nothing left in the subjective state of our thought which contradicts our objective. 
Those are the hidden layers between what we think, what we want, and what our truth really is. So how do we access what the truth is for us? Well, meditation is a big one. Get in there, listen to the still small voice. You gotta listen. You didn't want to listen to that. I don't agree with that. Well, it's the truth. <laughs> yeah, but, well, it's the truth. Journaling, for those one or two people here that journal, I understand, I keep trying, but I'm not very good at it. I understand that's actually a really powerful way to start bringing some of this stuff to the surface. That works. And then there's this thing some of you may be familiar with. Have you heard of muscle testing, right? Mm -hmm. Everybody's here heard of that? Yeah. Well, good. <clears throat> what is it? What is it? You haven't heard of it? Mm -mm. Well, then I'm going to ask you to come up here. And I'm going to show you exactly what it is. Okay. I'm willing participant you. So if anybody else is a little bit not 100% sure, what this is is a, a, a kinesiology-based protocol. Yes, which allows you to trust because your body knows what the truth is. Okay, so I'm going to show you guys kind of how this works, all right? Do me a favor, put your arm out of this. Is that your good arm? I don't care. Hold it. Don't fight me, just hold it. Hold it. Hold it for me. Okay, good. Now, hold it out there again. What is your name? Tell me what your name is. <laughs> it's not a hard question. My name is Patty Cookie. Patty Cookie, hold your arm out. Hold your arm. Hold it. Okay. Okay, good. Good. Now tell me, your name, hold your arm out. Now tell me your name, hold your arm out. Now tell me your name is John Smith. No. Don't just say it. John Smith. See? You were fighting me. You were holding it, but you yeah. still couldn't hold it because it's not the truth of you. See how that works? It works with all kinds of other things, too. Vitamins. They're picking out the correct yeah, vitamins. Yeah, yeah right. The people use them for vitamins. Thank you. That was a more excellent. Right here. Yeah, yeah, they do it with food, vitamins, because your body knows what the truth is about you. One of the things that I found that's a little bit weird, and that's the best way to do it, is to do it with somebody else. But you can also do it with yourself. There's probably a half a dozen ways to do it, but the way I found it's the best is this. I'll tell you what. Yep. Right? You do like this. You find, you know, say your name and, 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 and just get yourself a baseline. Tell yourself a lie about yourself and see how easy it is to, to go through that. You know, and then you find a baseline for yourself. All right, you want to try it? You want to try this? Okay. All right, say what your name is. And then see how hard it is to pull this off. Mm -hmm. yeah. mm -hmm. And then say, like, all the women say you're a man, and all the men say you're women, okay. and then see, yeah. right, do like this. Okay. See how easy it is to pull it apart? Yeah. When it's not the truth. Right, when it's not the truth, you can't hold on to it. Yeah. Oh. So, this is an interesting way to talk to yourself about yourself. Ask yourself some of these questions. Talk to yourself about these deep inner questions and go inside and actually find out what the truth is. Again, it doesn't lie. It's absolutely the truth. The body knows. And when you do this, you can know what your truth is. I tried it with myself and, and I found some truths, you know. Knowing what the truth is, that hidden under our truth with the capital T, once we know that, then we start taking the first step towards changing that belief. Changing what it is that we think. Understanding what it is that the truth of ours is and taking the step to line them up so that then we walk the path towards our values. And you know, when you do the testing, if you find out that what you think is the truth, for instance, I did, uh, I did this 
And I said, I'm very wealthy. And, you know, it came right apart. But when I said that I was prosperous, I was able to hold on to it. I have a prosperous mindset. I have what I need. Even I have a little bit of what I want. So that's the truth of me. If I wasn't in agreement with that, that would be a place for me to start to build that particular muscle inside of me. Because I want to be here, but I'm here. But now I know I'm here. You know, if you want to go somewhere, you have to know where you're starting in order to get there, right? When you start to respond to your emotions in a conscious way, your self-esteem begins to soar. You feel better about yourself. Your life and your relationships immediately improve. Becoming friendly with your emotions is a wonderful gift to your well-being and your happiness. It can also be a great uh, gift to others. So I would like to suggest that we all work to become more aware of what our emotions are trying to tell us. They're there. We can listen to them or not. But appreciation for them will make you more aware of how a particular life situation is affecting you. And then either accept it, find your peace in it, or change it. Make it the way you believe it should be. Create the life you want. It's not particularly easy. There's change, there's interchange, there's outer change, there's all kinds of stuff. But it absolutely is possible. Our inner voice is constantly guiding us towards our true passion, towards our purpose, towards our truth. Listen to it. Because then you move towards your truth. And by moving towards our truth, how can we help but be more in line with why we're here? By moving towards our truth, how can we help but be more in line with spirit itself? And as Rajni says, get out of your mind, think less, feel more. Thank you. emotion is in our DNA and then the feeling is controlled by us and can be changed by us. I love that. I'm glad this was videoed tonight so we can go back on our website and watch it again and get all those things that went over my head. So let's give him another hand. It was fabulous. Thank you, Dave.